Hey guys, here's the logic for my game of life level. Uh, basically, these cells they communicate wirelessly with each other, so uh, it's real. They're just tileable, so I mean, uh, you can literally copy and paste these as, as many times as you want until you run out of memory in your level. And um, I'm just gonna explain the the process of exactly how it goes. Created by JReflex93. Yeah. Because I actually, I actually made all these uh, shareable. So if you play my level, you get to take all these and open them up and look at them. Um, you can see... Wait. Okay, these are tag sensors. They detect uh, when the neighbor... They detect neighbor cells and how, uh, how many are, are alive. So if you look at this, the range, you can see uh, it has a minimum range. So, within the, uh, it doesn't detect itself, so it has to go outside of a certain range, and then the maximum range is just enough to get all the direct neighbors, but not further than that. Um, so it'll detect how many are on in a certain range. This, actually, this tag just outputs power when one, when one, at least one is on. Uh, this one will output power when at least two are on, this one when at least three, and this one when at least four. So, like, uh, this not gate represents zero. Like, if this not gate is sending out power, it means zero neighbors are alive. And, uh, that's because as soon as one of them is on, just any, if any amount of them is on, one through eight, this tag will be on, because it's set to turn on when one neighbor is detected. So uh, that means this not gate will turn off, and then this, these are all XOR gates. Uh, they they output power only when one but not two of their inputs are on. So this uh, when you have one live neighbor, this will be giving power to this XOR gate, and uh, it'll be outputting power, and then this one will be off. And um, when you have uh, two of them on, both of these will be on. But uh, so this XOR gate will turn off because both inputs are on. And uh, then the next XOR gate will turn on because only one input, one input will be on. When you have three live neighbors, same thing happens. This one turns on. This XOR gate turns off. This one turns on. And that's how I counted the number of live neighbors. And then uh, they all go into OR gates. Uh, four different possibilities for the cell to be dead the next generation and two ways for it to be alive so it all feeds into two possible possible outcomes for the count of neighbors and then uh, those get stored in this uh, memory right here just temporarily uh, this is basically um, what's all the calculations done and this is uh, released into the the output like actually powering the cell or not when you press or when you're pressing R1 see these AND gates turn on and then uh, so right now if, if this, this is, uh, it's, it's, uh, this left one's getting power which means the cell's off as soon as you press R1 this thing will give power this AND gate will become active and then it'll give power to this which is the final state of it it'll turn it off or on um, when it's on it gives power to this tag and that's where the tag sensors come in for its neighbor cells that they will detect when this cell is alive and that's how that works pretty much if you got that at all uh... this is a memory there are five different states in this because this is an old version before i had to cut out one of them uh, these, these light blue things hold the values uh... alive or dead Right now they're all set to dead, and because left represents dead, right would represent on. Basically, what these do is when they receive a pulse on either of the inputs, the output gets set. They set the output, so w one output is on all the time. And when you receive a pulse, you're setting the output to be that that one that received the pulse. Basically, it takes a pulse and makes it permanent until it receives another pulse. Um, let me uh move this down here and play the level you can see how the the logic is happening inside the let me see okay see when you hold R1 it goes through 
the, the, the selector in the bottom and nothing's happening because it's dead. Watch the center light blue selector when I turn this on. See that? Um, that one was set to alive. So then if I go to the next, uh, to the right again, uh, you can see now the selector is powering the, the fourth selector and in, because of the rules of the game the cell I just turned on died automatically and then the next uh, the fourth thing is set to be dead so you know if you push R1 that many times I mean you just keep going and it will keep overriding the the saved data and then if you press L1 it, it doesn't overwrite any data but instead it, it takes the data from these and puts it to the final output you know uh, so if you press L1, if I press L1 one more time, it's gonna get to the center selector, and that's gonna give power to the the orange selector that was on the cell. You know, uh, this is hard to explain, but you know, you can actually just keep looping with L1, and it'll uh, keep doing that cool blinking thing. Um. Yeah, I guess that's about it. Uh, I really don't know where I'm trying to go with this, but that's just the logic. I won't even get into the logic for the cursor. It's just really messy. But basically, I'll explain what the different chips do. Uh, this, let me let me uh, shrink this stuff down. This chip controls the movement, it, and it has a camera and lighting settings in it. <clears throat> uh, this next chip controls actions, so you've got in here you've got forward and backwards pulses uh... left trigger right trigger and then uh... if either of them on then it sends that pulse out to do that this is a speed adjustment so it takes input from rotating clockwise and counterclockwise and it'll increase or decrease that and the more full it is the faster it pulses um, these are just the little tags that activate when you push circle or square random and clear and uh, each cell takes input. You know they'll detect when that tag's on. This is a uh, see when when you, when you push that the tag turns on and this all the cells detect it and then they'll all be set to off. Um, and uh, this is what actually detects when you're rotating clockwise or counterclockwise. I actually built all this logic. Uh, you can see this little note I put in here outputs a pulse upon receiving the four inputs in a counterclockwise order. So uh, this is like set to the up input and this is a left input right or down input and a right input. So uh, basically it's just this logic where you have to push them in the right order or they'll all be reset and when you do push them all in the right order then it'll send a pulse that lasts for like 0.1 seconds and then they'll all be reset again and then that's this pulse it'll power this tag rotate backwards and that's where uh, oops so when that turns on this tag sensor in here wait no never mind uh, when you rotate backwards it's it's detected inside the cell memory to rewind the, the, the cycle wait I don't know where it is Oh no! Rotate rotating is the, set the the um the playing speed. So that's got to be in here. Nope, nope. That's definitely not. Anyways, yeah, I'm kind of confused. So I think I'm gonna stop making this video. Anyways, that's uh you got the idea. Another long video, but that that's it. So thanks for watching. See you guys later.